feel safer because before we were learning about e-safety, we just didn't really know about anything on the computer. As the number of primary age pupils using the internet increases, so too does the demand on teachers to educate them about staying safe online. At Startford Primary School, staff have spent the past few years developing their approach. I think one of the important messages is that it isn't something that takes a lot of time or a lot of funding. It can be done quite quickly and relatively easily. There are a lot of resources available that, out there for teachers to be using. They don't have to start from scratch and make their own resources. It's making use of resources that are currently available. The school has developed five successful strategies for getting the e-safety message across in the classroom. Make use of resources! We're going to watch five short films, but each of the five films has one important message. When I was planning the lesson, it was quite easy to find a lot of resources on the internet. The difficulty was then narrowing it down to choose which would be most appropriate with my class. Down in the galley, Cara and Winston are logged onto their favourite gaming site, Seas and Pirates. Suddenly, a chat window pops up. It's a clan request from someone called Digs and Bones. Winston frowns at Kara. They've had clan requests before, but usually from friends they know. And I chose the videos from the smart crew from Childnet because I felt the way they'd chosen the pirate theme linked in with a class which is mainly boys, um, it was something that they could attract their attention and would make sure that the message got across. Never trust a message from someone you don't know, even if you're curious or it looks exciting. Let's take a look at what might have happened if they'd opened it. Although it's possible to do a lesson like that without the resource, you could do it with a teacher-led lesson. It's nice for the children to have a different resource to look at and often it will raise questions from them that I might not have thought about and that they might not have come up with if we were just having a general discussion. Lewis. When you've got this me like a message from someone and it's saying something that you don't want to do or something, you have to tell someone and then just you have to cover it until someone comes. I think with any resource that you decide to use, it's important that you've obviously looked through it yourself and you work out how it can be used within your class. Different teachers using the same resource that I did with my lesson would use it in a completely different way. Pupils move on to discuss differentiated scenarios from the resource to reinforce messages from the cartoon. We could do a comic where it makes the word smart. So, so oh no, we, with, with know what we do. We three different pictures yeah. of the thing, S and um, the word smart going down. I always tell an adult if something horrible comes up on the screen or a programme that you don't know. Yeah. Shall we make a poster? Yeah. yeah. yeah? How are we going to let class two know how to stay safe on the computer? Peter. When you've got your email and you've made your own password, yeah. don't take it anywhere or tell anyone it. When the children went into groups, they were given the choice of um, which method they would like to use to get their message across. But I did suggest that the children who had the most difficulty would work on a poster together. And that way we'll not only end up with a range of resources, but it also geared the work towards what the children were able to do because we did have some budding producers who were going to produce, you know, Oscar-winning films. If we were doing a film, we could, like, it, um, it could be going across with the sign saying on there. So, um, we could have the sign... 
You could make the ship go past at the start. Never give personal information away and never rely on someone you don't know. Lots of people are quite worried about teaching e-safety, particularly to children who have special needs or to a wide-ranging ability. I believe that even the children who have got the most severe special needs, and I do have statemented children within my class, should be included within the e-safety lessons. Some of it will go through, they will get some of the message. They may not get it all, but they're included. And often it's those children that use the computers more, especially at home, but it's important to make sure we reinforce those messages all the time because it will take longer for those children to understand what they need to do to stay safe. We have safety rules in the classroom, so if we're on the internet, we can just look at them so we know what to do when we're on it. You should have rules because if there's something wrong comes up, like a rude picture or picture that you, you don't like, you don't know what to do, If you should just leave it or log off. But you should really tell an adult, that's why we have rules. If you have a rule, then you need to always keep the rule. And if you if you don't use the rule, then everything is going to go wrong. So far, can you remember? Key stage one pupils remember these safety messages by creating their own online safety rules. And I want you to now talk to a partner and see how much you can remember. What did you have to tell your friends about being safe on the internet? Can you talk to your partner about it? I've learnt that when you go on the internet you should always tell an adult when you're um, going to go on something. I think rules are really important to children anyway. Um, generally we have rules throughout the school and in, in the classroom and they're very good at following them and it is a, a real guide for them. And we've carried the, the same rules that we learnt in the first e-safety lesson across throughout all of them. And I'm getting the children used to using the rules in every e-safety lesson and if they can remember them they can use them at home as well. Lots of people have remembered lots of different things so we're going to try and put it all together and see how much we have remembered about being safe. What tips could you give me then, Oliver? To not send your email or address. And you don't want to give strangers your address do you? Because they're strangers and you don't know them, that's right. If somebody sends a rude picture of yourself and they say, like, come to my house and you don't know them, don't come and don't that, reply. Exactly. You can't see them because they're not in front of you. So it could be anybody. It could be somebody saying, I am a, a ten-year-old girl, but it might not be that person. It might be somebody that's lying because we know that there might be some bad people on the internet as well. So you've got to be very careful, haven't you? We looked at the rules on the different websites that we've looked at and on the CyberSmart website. The children actually worded their own rules, so it's things like never give out your name, don't tell anyone your password. The children have, have done that in their own words, so it's much more memorable for them because it's their own messages, so they're bound to remember them than if I just read them out to them. You can go on any of these cool sites by just clicking on it, but we need to check before we start that we've done all of the rules. If something pops up on the screen that you don't like or that's something that upsets you, something that shouldn't be there maybe, what are you going to do? Press on the dolphin and that will cover up the screen and then, you, then what are you going to do after you've done that? Tell a teacher, OK? So everybody's safe and ready to start. I want you to think back, when we, when we looked at the, the lesson that we did on the Grid Club, and if you remember we looked at the Cyber Cafe, and the idea of that was to get across to you some of the, the safety messages when you're using the internet or any sort of modern technology. And there was a section on that which was called Smart Thinking. And I said to you, um, did any of you look at this section? And the ones of you that actually looked at it said, oh yeah, I had a quick look at it, but it was boring, so I clicked off it. What I'm going to do today, your challenge is I'm going to give each of each group you're going to have a scenario. So I'll give you these sheets. What I want you to do within your group is just have a discussion about how you're going to do a role play. I'm trying to get them to think of the importance of the, the safety. It's, I could easily stand up there 
and talk to them for half an hour, an hour, and giving this message to them. But I like to think, you know, I'd much rather like them to get involved in their own learning. And so rather actually saying to them, this is a situation that you could have, this is what you should do about it. It's much better to say, if this happens, what are you going to do? What are the smart thinking messages do we need to concentrate yeah. on? Say he got a message, we could come into the classroom or something, and you ask us if we reply, and we say no. And then you say, well, that's the right thing to do, and then that way you can get across that yeah. you don't reply yeah, to messages. Yeah. We need to think about all that in our role play. Yeah. Stop them from being hurt on that website. You can like have a password. You have to have yeah, yeah. Under it and yeah. Like, make sure that no one's. But the thing is, yeah. Well, they could have like seen all these ma as soon as they saw all these nasty things, taken them off the website. With something like the role play and the dis discussion, there, it's I think it's a lot easier for me to just set something up like that up, and then I can just stand back and let them do the learning themselves. Is, can anyone go on this website? Well, we did have a password, but I, I passed it on to a few people, like half the school. So did I. Those half the school could have told anyone at their home, you could have told anyone anywhere in the world. Well, my website, nobody can put anything on it other than me. Well, so what's, what's gone wrong here, Alicia? Um, they've opened the website for the whole school to put stuff on. Right. How, then, how have they done that? Um, by giving out passwords. Previously we have just read stuff through and it, we just don't take it in. And with the role plays we get like two in one lessons really with the drama in the, and like, but we have to think about it so it's much better and much more fun. I think it helps a lot, like, you're actually thinking about what position people are in when that kind of thing happens to you, and it's better than just reading it and thinking, well, that happened and that's it. I also think that it's more real life. If you're sort of doing a role play, it's more that it's happening to you instead of telling you what happened to other people. We decided from the outset that it was something that we wanted to do with the whole school and that's not just the, every teacher within the school, it's support staff, uh, making parents aware of the importance of it as well so that all staff are aware of the issues, can confront it if anything happens within the classrooms, also outside of the classroom support staff are aware as well. So before school and after school clubs are also reinforcing the importance of that safety within the school. When you're learning it, you'll get older still knowing these basic facts. And when you do get older, you seem to need it more and more because you would have mobile phones, you'd use the computer quite a bit more. And I think having these basic facts will keep you safe. <laughs>